Political candidate and liberty activist Avi Yemeni organised a free speech rally outside Facebook's Melbourne office on October 6th. Yemeni, a candidate in the upcoming Victorian state election, had his page with nearly 200,000 followers unpublished by Facebook for what they deem hate. He is just one of many victims of the censorious practices of the multinational corporation, not to mention the censorship of other big tech sites like Twitter, Google and Reddit. We really are living in clown world. When I think of 10 years ago when I first joined Facebook, it was just a place that we would gossip and flirt and share our trashy photos of getting drunk. Interesting to know what you were doing in the noughties, Dave. And then the, the left were able to use it to have some to motivate people, to organise people, to reach people and they had political victories. And then we conservatives, we were able to do the same thing. We sort of caught up to them. But then what we found out was that the tech companies are actually on the side of the leftists who are using Facebook and Twitter and all that to motivate all their people in the first place. And so now we're in another stage where us conservatives were like, well, if you're on the side of the leftists, then we're going to do something about that. You've either got to support free speech or we're going to break you up. We're going to put pressure on uh, the politicians to break you up. And yeah, so from here, I don't know what's going to happen next, but this is the stage that we're at now. We've got to make uh, the tech companies uh, respect free speech. Damn right. Yeah. A spirit of national pride and love for freedom filled the air, with about 100 patriots attending. Another very special guest was there in support as keynote speaker. Okay, so I've run into the bad boy senator himself, Fraser Anning. Thanks for joining us in Melbourne, by the way. It's out of your way, but it's always good to have a, at least one senator stand up for freedom of speech in a country devoid of people with morality and honour in that way. Yeah, I'm happy to be down here, uh, uh, Matt. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's very important, this freedom of speech. Uh, we've got uh, Avi Yemeni uh, from ALA, obviously uh, standing up for the rights of the Victorian people. And ALA is the only Conservative Party in this state, as far as I can see. And uh, really, it, it seems to be nearly getting to be a lawless state. We've got African gangs running around the place, uh, attacking people and destroying property. And uh, unfortunately, not being arrested. And I think it's uh, not, not that, I don't know if it's the police's fault. I think they're probably, their hands are tied by your moronic uh, Premier here. Yeah, that, that's true. So, uh, Daniel Andrews has not only tried to find Milo Yiannopoulos $50,000, but also uh, the organisers of Lawrence Southern and Stephen Molyneux's event, $50,000, I was 58 and I think a little bit less than 50, because these far left commies decided that they didn't want to hear, or they didn't want anyone else to hear some people say things that they didn't like. So, they've come and they've damaged property, they attacked buses, and they yelled obscenities at people, so they threw things at people, and for some reason that means Lawrence Southern and Stefan Molyneux get fined. I don't know how that actually works, but it's important that people actually call that out for what it is, which is essentially a very overt extortion racket. Exactly, mm. exactly, and the police are there already being paid by the taxpayers to protect citizens from people who are committing crimes which obviously these Antifa guys are doing, you know, they're, they're the ones who are breaking the law. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's typical of Andrews, though, you know, he's a complete dud and uh, he needs to be put out of the place, hopefully, next time. But, uh, and, and things like these rallies and freedom of speech rallies, uh, uh, you know, the reason a lot of people don't come to them, decent people, are they're scared by these people. So they've already taken away their rights by uh, intimidating them when they do come to these things. and. Uh, and that's typical of all socialist regimes, the way they, they come out of the woodwork. Uh, you know, your socialists uh, attack people who just want to have a, uh, a rally and talk about uh, freedom of speech. Well, it's not just the violent intimidation either. It's the fact that they will find out who you are and they'll find out where you work yeah. and they'll contact your employer and say, this person is my racist, my Nazi, Nazi. My, my everything. I mean, they never mention the fact that Nazis are actually socialists, <laughs> meaning they're pretty much on the same side in a, in a, in a philosophical sense. Yeah. But it's great that you're down here and we do need many more senators to, to stand up or many more Australian politicians and MPs to stand up for freedom of speech because it'd it is be getting nice. slowly it'd eroded. It would be nice, wouldn't it? But uh, unfortunately we've got a, a socialist party, a left-wing party and a 
Communist Party running the country, as I've said before, and so you're not going to get any, any joy out of them. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're hooked up with the United Nations. A lot of this rubbish is coming out of the United Nations. We've got to get out of that uh, corrupt globalist organisation. So uh, the sooner we can get out of there, the, the better for all of us in Australia. Well, Dave, do you want to ask me one thing before we uh, finish up? Yeah, sure. Do you think it's just really important that we take back the public space from the left with all of these rallies? I know that you're, like nearly every other weekend, you're doing an event in Queensland to just yeah. on something, whether it's for men's rights, whether it's um, for free speech. Uh, abortion laws and uh, the safe schools and all the other rubbish that's coming out of the uh, United Nations. Yeah. Yeah. We do need to take it back. I mean, really good men fought and died for uh, all of our rights uh, to say what we believe and to, for the freedom of speech. And they died in trenches and, uh, you know, on Gallipoli and Flanders Field. And the least we can do is fight back. And, and uh, if we don't do it now, I can tell you, you won't have another chance. You know, in another few years' time, your freedoms are all gone. And uh, what do we do then? You know, look back and say, well, we should have fought harder then. So it's, it's not much for people to get out and uh, spread the word like good people like the people who are here today. Exactly. exactly. Thanks very much for, for your time. You're a patriot and <laughs> keep up the great work. Thanks very much, Matt. Very much. Thanks, David. Yeah. The speeches were interesting. Fraser Anning discussed the Australian spirit, mentioning the fact that men died for our right to freedom. It was about what you'd expect from a patriot who self-declares as not a politician. Australian Liberty Alliance President Debbie Robinson made a short speech calling out the censorship of places like Facebook. She pointed out the fact that these are not publishers. They are essentially the same as phone companies. We wouldn't allow a phone company to shut us off if they didn't like what we had to say. So why do we allow big tech to do the same? Avi also made a speech, as did his mate. I want to take the time to point out the three reasons we need to force social media to allow free speech on their sites. Firstly, they use taxpayer funded technology to not only build their sites, but also offer their services to the people. The internet is utilised and accessed via taxpayer funded infrastructure. They then grew using tax breaks and other incentives. The second reason is politicians, emergency services and other public services use these sites. Taxpayers have the right to access all services funded by the taxpayer and we have the right to contact our representatives directly if other people do as well. Not only is it limiting our freedom, it's also leaving people less safe as those locked out of social media cannot hear emergency broadcasts by police, firefighters and others. Finally. And the most important reason is social media is the modern town square. The state has no right to lock people out of the conversation and nor do big tech executives. They don't have to like or approve of what people say, they just have to allow people to have their say. Debbie highlighted that in Australia we have the right to political communication protected by our constitution as found by our own high court. Given the fact that politicians use social media to communicate, this should imply we all have the right to use them regardless of our political opinion. The rally even got its own protester. Him out of here now! Stupid By the way, he looked familiar to you. That's right, it was AIDS Sheeran. After the speeches, I caught up with Avi. Great speeches, it was really, really good to hear you and Fraser. It's always good to hear and it's, it, you. And you sort of covered it in, you sort of covered it in the speech, but it's fantastic to have a, a genuinely right of centre conservative party that's going to stand up for Australian values, freedom of speech, the right to free assembly without in, intimidation, the right to hold views that other people don't like, without having violence threatened or even having your job threatened and, and all that kind of thing. So thank you very much. I just um, try to think of, I should have thought of some better questions, but so from from here, how, how do you think you're going to go about your campaign and like so, where are you going to get out there? Like so we, we, we've got exciting things. Firstly, is Fraser Anning is going to literally join me on the campaign trail. Fantastic. So he's going to be on the streets with me uh, campaigning for the Eastern Metro, uh, uh, the, uh, we're going for the upper house there. That's our main 
seat. That's the seat I'm running for. Um, we've got a, we're going to organise a bunch of different events around uh, safe schools and all the different issues, um, which will probably bring a bit of attention. You know, the media is going to be against us. Of course, the, the, of course. The two major parties are going to be. Uh, Trying to shut us down. Well, you're telling the truth, yeah. and, and it's a revolutionary act. As okay. Well. So, 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 um, but we're going to learn from the best. We're going to learn from people like Donald Trump and go. Just take everything they throw at us and use it. Fantastic. And and you know, we're going to try get these preference deals that mm. haven't been able to. You know, we've got the senator who's willing to actually help us mm. on on a level that we didn't have before. So also tactically how to how to go about winning this seat. You know, ALA in the past has run but they went very, very broad through money at everyone and kind of got they got a lot of support but it was too spread out that they got nothing. In fact Fraser Anning really, if you look at it, um, he got voted in well through Malcolm Rob, but it was all through the preferences of ALA. Mm. So they, uh, One Nation only had 19 votes or something there. Yeah. It was the 40,000 ALA preferences. Mm. So this time, we're going to play the game our way, and then when we get in, we'll probably have to have a public holiday. We'll call it Victoria's Snowflake Meltdown or something. <laughs> <laughs> because they will be triggered. I don't know what's more exciting. You know? Like... There's oh. nothing better than yeah. oh, it's gonna, like, and Especially like in, in the Jewish community, it is going to be... Because, you know, they're making fun of it all and they think mm. like it's all... And I said to them, yeah, tr you guys said the same about Trump. Mm. My first speech in Parliament's going to be... I'll probably have my, my selfie thing with me as well. <laughs> G'day, it's Harvey here. Here to mess you up. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's fantastic what you're doing. The fact that you're actually willing to be a public figure and say things that are very triggering to a certain group of people who have shown in the past not just now but decades four decades that they are willing to escalate to violence so it, it's quite brave and I, I do wish you all the best Thanks, and I really do hope you win a seat because Australia needs a political well, shake-up well I tell any of your Victorians anyone in Melbourne who can help us um, physically on the ground you know doing the flyers manning boots anyone you know I hate to say this but I am literally what it looks like from looking at who's running. I'm the only real conservative running in Victoria. So even if you're not, in, even if I'm not running in your um, area, we're going for that area specifically. It's not my area either. We're hitting that, we're targeting that because that is my most likely, that is my biggest chance. So get behind us and help us. And anyone anywhere else, if you want to donate to the campaign, please. Like we're up against the two major parties that have unlimited international money. You know, like, and we don't. We're just regular people going off hundred dollar donations. Exactly. We're using social media to get the message of the truth out there and take it up to the, the big guys who have a rigged system and have been corrupted by international finance, banking in Australia, big business, corporation, donors, all these kind of things. So it's fantastic that you're doing it on a shoestring budget. And again, if you win, win a seat, that's great. Arvi Yamini, great Thanks, to chat. Mate. Thanks guys, night. we're gonna take Victoria back. The vibe of the event was positive and the content of the speeches was good. About 100 people turned up, which isn't a large number, and highlights the work that needs to be done. The left have intimidated many into staying away. Big tech needs to be brought to heel, as do our political elite. Those of us who love liberty have a mountain to climb, but despite the relatively small turnout, most are on our side. They are the silent majority. As Fraser Anning said, we need to speak out now because in a few years, it will be too late. I hope you enjoyed the content. The full speeches are on Avi's channel. Link to them in the description. If you're new, please check out my other content and subscribe if you do like it. Also, if you enjoyed this content, please consider sharing it on your social media as that goes a long way to helping my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see ya when I see ya.